You know, never walk into a negotiation you're not willing to walk away from. And remember that you belong in every room that you walk into. That's pretty much it. Hi, I'm Shonda Rhimes, and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK. When we're casting Bridgerton, you know, we're always looking for people with that special spark. You know, I love to find new talent and actors who get excited about the work that they're doing. For us, it's really just about finding actors who are trained and are dedicated and gifted, and we just love to work with people who love to work. There's so many incredible theater actors out there who you know, deserve to showcase what they can do on sort of the larger scale. I think making a long running show is not simple. Bridgerton's eight episodes a season. You know, a show like Grey's is 24 episodes a season, Scandal's 22 episodes a season, it's different. But making a show that endures over time is really about making sure that you are inventing something new every season and that you are really putting a different creative effort into it every season. You don't ever want to find yourself running the same track again and again and again. You want to make sure that it feels a little bit different for the audience, that you're keeping it exciting and keeping it new. No show runs itself, and as a first-time show creator, it's almost impossible to just run a show, which is what's so great about having somebody like my producing partner, Betsy Beers, on board, having somebody like me on board. I mean, I had Betsy when I was first doing my first show. Getting that experience behind you to help you with everything from post-production to casting to music to editing to, you know, to have all of our thoughts to be able to bring to bear, really, it's important. You want a powerful team of people who know what they're doing. I always say, I don't care where a good idea comes from as long as it's coming. And having a team of people who can really bring those good ideas is important. You know, in talking about things like diversity and inclusion, that discussion is only a luxury to somebody who is always included in the conversation. If you are a person who has not always been included in the conversation, it's not, a, it's not a conversation that you need to have. It is a necessity. So for me, it's always been just an obvious necessity to make sure that people who look like me are included in the conversation. And I think that a lot of people feel that way. I don't think that it's an extra that needs to be discussed. I think that it's just an obvious necessity. We make projects that we want to watch, period. That's really it. I read Julia Quinn's books over and over again. I thought that they were amazing. I could see myself in them, which meant that they felt universal to me. And I thought these would make great shows. Like, I would want to watch these. And I felt like other people would want to watch them too. And that's pretty much how we choose to make our projects. If we want to watch them, we think other people would want to watch them too. I think people want to be entertained. I mean, I really do. I think the joy of getting to watch a good program and be entertained and have something like Bridgerton to sit down to and escape with is important. And I don't think that there's anything more comforting than getting to sit down with a show like that and, and to enjoy yourself and escape that way. I wish there were some sort of um, computer program where we typed in everything and it all came out the other end and there was like charts and graphs and ideas. But really, it, it truly is the same thing that it's always been. We follow our gut. We make the projects that we love. We make the projects that we get excited about. We make the projects that speak to us emotionally. We want people to feel like the stories that we are making, the content that we are making in everything from our podcasts to things on our website, to the, the content on Netflix. We want it all to feel like we are both holding up a mirror for our audience and opening a window for them so that they can sort of see into somebody else's world. The show, I think, struck at a very particular time when we were all sort of uh, trapped at home, locked down by a pandemic. I think it speaks to the plight of women and the responsibilities that women feel in a way that feels both modern and classic at the same time. The stories of the kings and queens of England have been fascinating to people. The 
challenges they faced, all of those things have been fascinating and the lives that they lead. I think everybody wants to know about them. It was an opportunity to see people of color represented. I think that there is a romance to it, it is enjoyable and exciting and sexy. People are universal and the problems that we all feel are universal. You know, we all feel the pain of love. We all don't want to be alone. We all feel lost. We all want our parents to love us. All of the issues that we watch our characters go through in season one, again in season two, the career aspirations of, you know, our secret lady whistle down. They're all things that we know and understand in a modern era because they feel universal to all of us. So I think that those moments are things that we can relate to simply because they're part of the human condition. We know a project is right for us when it feels like something that we're all excited about and that we can all get behind. Conversely, I think it's it's the same when something's not right for us. You know, it's we all have that sort of same feeling. I've learned that there's no point in regretting turning down a project. And by the way, if a project is something that we turned down and it came out amazingly done by somebody else, it wouldn't necessarily have been the same project done by us. It would have been probably different in different hands. Creative hands make different projects. The first time I really believed that I was successful was being inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame by Oprah Winfrey. That was the first moment I thought to myself, oh, maybe you can relax now, like you've actually made it. You know, people laugh when I say it, but it's not funny to me because it really was the first moment I actually thought like, oh, like you've made it. Like if, if Oprah's on stage saying that you've made it, maybe you've made it. I don't think you ever want to feel like you've completely made it and you can relax and that's it and all the hurdles are done. That's not interesting, I think. I think it's much more interesting to feel like there's still more hills to climb and there's still more more battles to be fought and still more creative doors to open. So I'm always looking to see what's next and what's more interesting and what I haven't learned yet because there's always things I haven't learned. There are so many women um, in business, women in television, who I find to be admirable and powerful and incredible. Everyone from Cicely Tyson, Oprah's one, there's powerful, incredible women out there who are doing amazing things. I've had the gift of spending time with so many incredible women who have really pushed me, taught me, and just shown me by example who I should be and who I could be if I put in the effort. I think everybody experiences self-doubt in their work. And of course, I feel like if I was not a person who questioned every piece of work that I did and tried to make it better on a constant basis, I would be not striving to, to, be, to do my best work at all times. You know, to always be questioning, always to be wondering and trying to make sure that it's even better than it was the last time.